Hi guys, Pink here. This is episode 36 of Let's Learn A Jade Civil War 2. Um, right where we left off last episode, we had uh, redone the uh, the orders for early April. We're going to try to get past that crash we had at the end of at the end of April. So I believe all that's left to do is uh, finish up whatever builds we're going to do. Check a uh, check the uh, regional decisions and then and then execute the turn and cross our fingers. Um, what did we have left what we needed to do? I think we had we had done our builds during the game, during the during while we were doing the orders and I think I'm going to try to to continue doing it that way. We needed some cavalry somewhere. We needed some cavalry down here. So let's see if in the north, well, the south, southeast is, is Kentucky. Yeah, do we have any Kentucky cavalry? We do not. So let's switch that over to northwest and see if we can get some Illinois or West, or maybe the old northwest, old northwest, and see if that gives us. That's some Ohio cavalry. We can build an Ohio cavalry in Cincinnati. We've got enough. Let's build two of them. All right, now we are out of money. We have uh, 120 or 200 war supplies left, so they're probably going to end up selling some of those off. Um, regional decisions. Is there anything that defensive works potentially? Did we build a defensive work down here for this unit? Yes, we are building the defensive work there. I don't know if we really have... <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. I don't know if we really have a defensive unit um, or a place where we really need to be doing that again. Um, what did we do? Did we place any of these before? I think this was all during my various attempts at getting past this crash that I did all of this other stuff, so I'm not sure what I did. Okay, let's take one of these partisan units. It'll cost us five victory points, but let's stick one of these partisan units into into the western New Mexico region. I've uh, I've been hesitant to use these partisans in the past because I in some of my games that I've played um, learning my learning games, I'll put I'll put partisans back in here in uh, the parts of Tennessee that have um, higher um, unionist sentiment. And then I just run them along here and destroy all the railroads and blow up all the depots. And the uh, AI didn't appear to be able to deal with that. So I uh, haven't been doing that in this game. So, but this seems reasonable. He's just right here. There's nothing to blow up. So I'll just put him here. And I think that'll be something we can do. Mescaleros is something else we can do. Uh, it would be if we had any money. So we're out of money, so let's not even worry about that. Okay, <clears throat> we'll put the save on here again. Move the view to the Eastern Theater. I like to have it right here. All right. Hit the button, cross my fingers, see what happens. Hopefully it won't crash. If it doesn't, if I can't get past this crash, I, I'm, I think I'm just going to have to uh, to call this series to an end. I think we have uh, covered pretty much everything that uh, that there is to cover, although it's just scattered throughout 17 hours of of uh, of narrative. So if you're looking for something in particular, it, it might be a little hard to find. Oh, what's happened here? We see Longstreet. Longstreet's core is very strong there. He may have re rejiggled something. Haven't seen Jackson. I wonder if he, uh, when we wiped out his force here, I wonder if he was injured or hopefully even killed. I guess it was in Strasbourg that we did that. The, uh, re the release candidate 2 for the 1.05 patch, one of the things it did, it made the uh, turn process faster, and I can definitely definitely see that now that we're back to the release candidate 1. All right, here's Johnston's force, which, as far as we know, had only, had only leaders in it. All right, so now we're running through the turn. A 
supply phase. Okay. Jonesboro Young Rebels. Okay. A division has appeared here in Clarksville. This detachment has arrived in Luna, New Mexico. Sumter, didn't he? Didn't we smack him around a little bit earlier? I don't recall. Cherokee Rifle has arrived there. <coughs> Excuse me. More force arriving down in Savannah. And it looks like they're definitely building this force up here in, in Clarksville. Oh, here's our fight against these, these Indians. They did more damage to us as far as just casualty wise, but it looks like they, they were able to withdraw pretty quickly. They only lost 15 troops. We lost 61. They did a little more cohesion hits to us, but uh, we, we smacked them around a bit. I think that was the force that had been over here that looked like it was heading possibly to Atchison or Leavenworth. Um, Huger, or Yuji, Yuji is how that's pronounced, I believe. Forrest has come down here, and our force has moved up there. More forces moving around near Savannah. Oh, here's a fight. Yeah, we sent uh, Carson down here, and he took out that unit. That's good, completely completely destroyed him, but he only took 430 casualties. I think that means we captured the rest of them. We captured 400. We'll have to see. I think he's wiped out, though, because he has taken 14 of 14 hits. Uh-huh. And right here is about where it crashed last time. Oh, it didn't crash. Oh, happy day. Um, well, <coughs> excuse me. Hopefully, oh, there's a pretty, that's a pretty stout force here. Where do these guys come from? Uh, a militia. There's also a garrison here. Two militia units and then a garrison. So maybe three militia units. And our, um, Cohesion is down to half. We'll need to recover before we hit him again. All right. <clears throat> let's go through. Let's see. I don't think we had anywhere where we were doing any particular movement, were we? Oh, yeah, down here. Did he fail to stay on a... fail to stay on a uh, assault posture? Mr. Grant, he's down to a, oh, he's a three. I think he's been drag, drugged down by uh, Halleck. So it goes, that's all right. Maybe Halleck said, wait, stop, don't do that. Quite a force in Clarksville here, quite a force here. We have a 25th division, a 26th division. Mm -hmm. Well, I had originally thought that we would split this force and take half of it down to Gallatin. But uh, given, the, given the strength of that force, I don't know if that's wise. Oh, first thing we got to do is go through the uh, go through the uh, Messages. Um, looks like we did get a we gained a a one point of morale from somebody somebody surrendering somewhere. I'm guessing that might be one of these uh, one of those forts over here. Yeah, Scott looks like he. I don't think he attacked him. He just he just starved him out. Um, all right. Victory points from. Objectives is 45. From surrender and disband is 2. Structures, loss, and capture is 5. Changes from bat 1. Not too bad. Not too bad. I think we're still quite a ways behind the Confederacy in that. They're at 1,008 and we're at 830. Their morale is 99. And ours is 103, so we are actually at a, at a higher morale than they are. 
Okay, so let's... Oh, what was I just looking at? Was that Atchison? Yeah, one of his supply trains is completely empty now, so we're going to have to send that back to get some supply. Oh, there's 22 here. That'll be nice. Okay, so there's definitely more supply coming through here than I had thought was going to be possible. So I think I do need to rethink my uh, the way I evaluate what the Confederacy can do to, based on their supply situation, because I appear to be um, way too conservative on that. Okay, let's take a look at the messages. Um, <clears throat> scripted event, excuse me. Uh, McClellan is active again. And we're not taking advantage of it at all. Confederacy has commissioned more rolling stock for the railroads. The entrenchment maximum has reached five. I kind of like how they do that, how that just kind of slowly makes its way up as, the, as, as things change. Railway accident occurred. Loss of rail capacity. It doesn't tell us how many this time, though. Combat missions. They have surrendered in Farnham, Kansas, losing one unit. We gained two victory points and a morale point. Garrison surrendered. We took 100 prisoners. They succeeded in retreating in this battle after taking two hits. So these, these units here were presumably, oh, they were on passive. When you're on passive, that also um, increases your odds of retreating. So they were on passive. Their uh, cohesion took a little bit of hit. Barely any damage to them, though. These guys are hard to pin down. Irregulars are hard to pin on. Confederates retreated in Henderson, Kentucky. So that would have been uh, forest troops. Oh, we do have a little bit of more information. We have the 7th Tennessee Cavalry. So just a single, just a single um, cavalry regiment there, or presumably a probably a regiment, possibly a brigade. We only got a four here. His hide value is a three. So that is not, it's cutting down on the info we would otherwise get from him. See how we have the power displays on this guy? We have a three in this detection region. We have a three. We have a, we have a four here, but we're not getting that much information on forest as we are on, uh, on this, this unit here. And that's because that hide value of, uh, of Forrest is, uh, is concealing more of that uh, information from us. And I believe that's, uh, I believe that's due to one of uh, the traits that, uh, that uh, Forrest has. Um, so there's that. They retreated in Luna, New Mexico after taking some hits there. After taking zero hits. We captured 100 rifles and 400 prisoners in Luna, New Mexico. That was this one here where we wiped out the uh, first Texas state militia. It appears that we've wiped them out. Let's see what's still here. Uh, none of those are that, so... Well, that's good. And that's it for those. Let's see if there's anything in here we care about. Delays. Um, Ricketts reverted to defense. Fremont. Buell, Grant, all re reduce, reverted to a defensive stance. Um, wear and tear. Everybody arriving. People arriving. Okay. Trained. We have some units getting trained in Fort Craig for whatever reason. Um, something that looks like it might be in this force has been trained up. Ohio Volunteers. That's in Buell's force. Um, possibly these have been trained in McClellan's force. Something trained back there. Transports received the Milwaukee. So one of these uh, units that we had lost to transport, that has been replaced. And the gunboat squadron has also received a replacement. And here's the other transport received. So those guys are probably pretty close to good now. Flatboat was disbanded and then all ships were scuttled. We have finished an ironworks in New York. We have our scuttling of these flatboats in Pickens, Florida, Fort Pickens. We built our depot in Fort McCracken. We've got, um, we don't have any supply here. Hopefully it'll start coming in now. We haven't actually been through a supply phase with, um, with this depot built. So hopefully after next turn we'll see more supply coming through here. 
supply was 30 was received we had quite a bit re coming through um, here quite a bit sitting here in uh, in in this bit in Illinois where is that Kin Kinsale or oh, Metropolis Kinsala maybe Kinsale Kinsala Kinsale who knows so hopefully we're gonna see this build up as a supply base uh, training is finished of a bunch of stuff transports uh, two new uh, two new ironclads have been finished building the depot we took Fort Scott and gained 22 supply and six ammunition that's good taking Pino Altos ah, we took that with our uh, with our uh, partisans here captured eight supply here that's gonna be pretty nice that was kind of a counterpart to what they had done to us up there we've started building a depot in Warren Kentucky that's this that's gonna hopefully what's building here oh depots aren't built instantly okay so when it says we've started building a depot that's exactly what it means so this depot is not completed okay nice to know control of Ironton Missouri has been reduced to zero that was right here I wonder why that is has something moved up out of here or was that just due to the um, was that just due to them having greater loyalty here that it slowly reduced our control there I don't know but um, we don't if should should there be something over here coming up either on the uh, west bank of the Mississippi here or or from here we don't really have anything in this region to protect our our supply line what's what's sitting in here we have we do have sufficient force to hold that I think but our supply line itself we've moved all our forces forward and we haven't we haven't kept any back here I think that's a mistake and the system and various guerrillas soldiering soldiers siding with the United States of America have been spotted nearby western New Mexico pioneers opening a trail telegraph lines telegraph network here presumably that means this is completed he's up to 80 civilization level Confederate States of America requisitioned food horses and tools in South Carolina Charleston our <coughs> excuse me our shipping lanes transported nearly 1900 supply we brought in 30 money and 24 war supply and Carson has been congratulated for his actions okay well we've made it through the turn without it crashing that's that's a plus that's a plus I'll take that call that a win um, hopefully I mean time will tell we'll see how it goes uh, going forward I will probably hold off uploading this video and the next couple until I until I'm sure that this has been resolved so um, we got a little bit of time left let's take a look at what we've got here um, we did bring in some more troops this Eagle Brigade especially I was wanting to put him with some he's got 10 what if we were to add the Eagle Brigade here to Hooker does he have any artillery he does not so let's take these two units of artillery in here um, something else that I thought of while I was watching that previous video um, where where hookers divisions or his his brigades in his division were at half cohesion that was because they were brand new we had just marched them down here the prior turn so they had, that's why their cohesion was low it wasn't that they had uh, still been suffering from from the battle when you when you initially bring in when a, a, a unit initially comes available after it's been formed it takes a while for its cohesion to, to come up to max so anyway that was just thought I'd pass that on what do we got here we've got um, he's got 16 why don't we add one more of these this Delaware force here and that'll put him to 18 500 700 points that's pretty stout this guy is sitting at 17 do you have artillery he's got plenty of artillery but they're all mixed up mm, let's, let's undo him and bring him back together 
So what if you got eight? Nine, ten. Try that. Brings up to fourteen. Fifteen, sixteen. Let's do that. What's that look like? That looks like they're in order now. Of course that matters. Um, we could bring that other Delaware unit in with this guy, I think. Let's do that. Yeah, of course let's put them right back out of order again, but we'll just not worry about that anymore because it's stupid. Okay, we do have this uh, Pioneer unit, third Pioneer. This uh, reduces the time needed for entrenchments. What do we have here? We've given them the pontoons. Let's give them also this unit here, because we are going to eventually give everybody that. So he'll go combine there. Um, I think we're of sufficient of... We're, we've got two divisions here that are in good shape. Let's take McDowell now. Now we can't make him a core commander while he's in a stack with somebody senior to him. So let's take McDowell, Hooker. Oh, Hooker, we were going to... Hmm. Are we going anywhere this turn? Yeah, here's... Well, he's a five still. Um, I think we're going to need to move. We're going to need to move out. That might, uh, that might jog the uh, AI a bit. So let's take... Um, let's take McDowell and these two divisions. We'll move them into a separate stack. And then we will make McDowell a core. So now he is the alt, alt click. Third core. So now we have the first core, the second core, and the third core. And I believe they actually would show up here if if these Yeah, Grant's core, Lou Wallace's core, yeah. So that would tell us though. So now we have three decent units here. Um what shall we do? I have a thought. Let's take two of these cores. Let's let Hooker give Hooker whoops a chance to come across the river again. We'll leave that there. We'll put these on offensive. So we will bring two units across to uh, to Fredericksburg. Let's see, he gets there in three days, he gets there in nine days. Are these connected? They are not connected. So Hooker is going to be, or uh, McDowell's core is going to be moving, moving over and down. And now what we can't do, because we are a army now, is we can use this synchronized movement. Allows an army stack and associated cores to move at the same speed, arriving at the same time in a given region. Two or more core can of the same army can to move in synchronicity. So let's let's put that on and see what that does. See if that lets us get across there at the same time. I think so. Oh, I forgot to move this guy before in the previous orders we had uh, there's no reason to leave him on passive now that he has nobody here but oh, these guys need to recover this uh, I made this little cavalry brigade with uh, with this guy and I had moved it down I believe here to kind of scope out Richmond here so I'm going to do that again a turn later than I would have otherwise and we'll, we'll see what happens there. And then maybe even move in there. One more. Just kind of do a little around around here. And then we're going to we're going to cut this railroad. We're going to destroy that railroad there. 
this pioneer force is going to connect with them. Yeah, now this unit here, we've got two divisions here that we don't have any more information on. This apparently is still just those leaders. Um, you know what? Let's take this guy. This is something we had talked about way, way a long time ago. Let's take this unit and put him on a feint to here. So what this guy is going to do is he's going to attack Yuji here, but he's not going to press it. We're just mainly interested in keeping him here. So if he's, if he's potentially marching elsewhere, like we do have that thing with the cores that can march to the sound of the guns, what if we put him on this um, basically a feint to to keep him in place without hopefully taking too much damage in, in return. Let's try that, see how that works out. Um, what else we got going on here? We still have, we know we have a very sizable unit here, a core again down here. What if we were to do the same thing? What if we were to do the same thing here? Kind of this, this type of a, uh, of an attack. Whoops. Just to see what's here. Maybe, in fact, maybe this one we don't even want to. We don't even want to make it a feint. But Beauregard and Longstreet. When Longstreet popped up on top there during the uh, during the replay of last time, he was very powerful. Oh heck with it. Let's just let's just go for it. Let's just go for it here. We've brought this up to 73% uh, military control here. This guy has, has moved farther down. Let's take this core, this core, this uh, little little cavalry unit. Can we move him by rail? Oh, okay, so we'll just move him down here. We'll get him in this region and we'll um, repair that railroad. Um, I think we didn't get that uh, sell off our war supply uh, message again, so I'm thinking that happens when it goes over 500. It kind of seems that might be it. Our, our money is quite low compared to how it's been. We'll have to see how that goes. Um, hmm. What else do we got going on up here? That seems to be good for there. Let's take a look at what's going on in Clarksburg here. Uh, this is mud. This is Mud. He's going to be here in nine days, so we're going to let him finish this movement, and then he will pause at that point to uh, to recover his his uh, cohesion. And while that happens, where's our where's our wagons? Where does wagons go? We had some wagons. I thought we had some wagons. Did I build wagons? There they are. Built wagons, but I apparently didn't move them. Or I, I had just built them last turn, that's what it was. So right here we're going to take these wagons and we're going to bring them up here. We'll use the train. Um, not going to get here as soon as, as soon as I was hoping, but I think we'll be okay. Now this is interesting. This little cavalry unit now, as you can see by this, by this icon, he is besieging Charleston. But we do have a nice high detection value in here now. And we can see that we have a garrison of 27 power, and then those two divisions, again, of right about a, a little over, what, 300? So about 300 uh, power there. So we should be okay. I hope, wouldn't that be nice if they just stayed in there um, until we could get this force up and besiege them? I don't think it's going to happen, but it would be nice if they did. So we'll bring those guys up. We'll leave this guy on, evade, and get out. Because if these guys come out and try to attack this guy, they're just going to wipe him out. Back east here, or east Kentucky, west. That's a very powerful force now for us. This is We're about equivalent here. So my original plan 
What do we got here? Um, Gustavus Smith and the 25th Division. You know, it looks like the uh, the AI is not using independent divisions as well. He is giving them a a field commander as well. Um, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Now my original plan was to leave half of my force here and then take Gallatin. And I think maybe we'll still do that because we do have that thing where it says march to the sound of the guns. So maybe we will try that. Maybe we will try that. Take one of the pack trains. Um, give this guy the command of the core, core command. We'll just leave him Gilbert's core, I guess. We'll move him down here using an offensive posture. And hopefully, if, uh, if uh, either one of these get attacked by this unit, hopefully um, the other one will, will move to its aid. We'll have to see how that works. We are starting to uh, entrench here in Bowling Green. So let's, let's see how that works out. Um, we're able to, to uh, cover Madisonville here. I wonder if we should, uh, let's, let's just go after, we're going to send him after uh, Forrest this time. Let's just see what happens. Uh, this large force that was in uh, Dover here has moved, presumably part of it to there. Um, Grant has still not taken this. Put him back to there. His supply is slowly, slowly going away. We do have our, um, should have our depot being built here. What is complete here. Let's take the supply unit and send that to Grant. Can we use the railroad? Oh yeah, get right there. Um, now having supply wagons in your uh, in your unit also uh, gives you a combat bonus, so that's a, that's another reason to do it. Wow, 30 days to get in here. It's mud now, right? Yep, yeah, mud. Oh boy, we're gonna get here just in time. Just in time to be really in bad shape as far as our as far as our uh, cohesion goes. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I think when when uh, Grant is done here, we'll we'll swing him around this way and maybe join in the fun. See if we can uh, take that out. Well, we are at the end of thirty minutes here. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a uh, I'll, I'll end this episode here, and then I'll run the I'll run the next one, and. Uh, at least as far as being able to uh, execute the turn and see what kind of shape we're in at that point and if I'm not able to if I'm not able to to get past that that crash I was having there then I'm just gonna have to to call this to a close and I probably won't be um, uploading these additional episodes but if you're if you're watching this if you're watching this that means it worked so uh, so forging ahead